back to Just Saying. I'm Anne Marie Batterstone, and the important person is here with me, who's South Selectman Christopher Weeder. I just ask the questions and make remarks. But we're here to offer you knowledge, and as you know, knowledge is power. So always remember that. And you know, I just wanted to say a couple of things. I'm very proud of the show because I believe that this is the only show in which a civilian, that would be me, is with an official. It would be you because. Um, Jim Leon used to have a, the conversation corner with Jack Hathaway, and I think it was only once a quarter. I think it was only like four times a year, or, or maybe a little more, more often than that. But you know, as, as you know, we cover each selectman's meeting. And disclaimer: you know, what Chris says does not represent the uh, opinion of of the board. Correct. All right. Um, and so, or, oh, by the way, another thing: like, if you would want to find our show, because I. You know, for me, it's a it's a magic box. I have a lot of trouble figuring out these things online. But if you want to find the show, if you go on YouTube directly on YouTube, you can put in just saying either Weeder or Battistone. If you're on um, Norfolk Community TV, there is a, a a button that says playlists, and then it says created playlists. So all of the shows that have more than one show, as you look down. And sometimes YouTube, for some reason, is involved in it and kind of switches the order around. But you should be able to find it, um, find it that way. So, or, or any of the other shows, for that matter. All right, you know, I um, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about this Quaglieri that came in. Yes. yes. Now he owns 194 Main Street. He owns 194 Main Street. He owns um, Rocco Plaza. He built that. Yes. He um, he owns the houses on um, on its Valley Street. There's oh, a yeah? uh, there's a number of condominiums he owns over there. He actually developed the I think it's a golf station, um, D'Angelo's down on Route One. Oh really? Yes. With the yep. stores and everything there. Correct. He had developed that hmm. and um, right across from yeah. Rocco Plaza. Yeah, and um, and he built the uh, trailer next to Rocky's Auto Body. He built that trailer. It's now occupied by a trailer company. They bought it from him, but oh, he built yes. that building. So yeah, he's done a he's done a fair amount of developing in town. He doesn't live in town, does he? He lives right over the line in Walpole. In Walpole. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, his buildings are Group B. The building here in One Ninety Four Main Street is is in the business district, the B One district. All in right. Because I, or maybe I misunderstood because I thought there was a, a, a Group A and Group B, and that the B was for less than fifty. This is a. Um, this is a uh, building categori categorization. It, the building code, Massachusetts building code, categorizes buildings. A, a is an assembly building. B is business. That's what you're referring to. And what he was, what his point was, was that the building at 194 Main Street, which he was referencing, is a uh, is a B building. So in other words, it, it has less than 50 people occupying it, other than the restaurant, which has its own separate permit. Oh. And therefore, it is not an assembly building requiring yearly inspections. Like, like the a, town hall. A, well, any or, kind of assembly building, a, a church type building, oh, okay. or a restaurant, or a, um, a, I think churches are exempt, but uh, any kind of assembly building. And in any case, with a restaurant, the inspections are su surprise. Anyway, they, they are surprised, but they all have a license and they actually have a permit. And they, and they pay they for do, those. They do pay for those, but they do realize there will be yearly inspections. I think uh, every restaurant in Norfolk actually goes through that process just to make sure sprinkler systems are up to date. Um, every day of fire extinguishers. And the Board of Health would do those. Uh, through the Board of Health, exactly. So he had the bylaws with him. And his he complaint did. was that... Um, there was a collection of that that he was that those buildings, the tenants' spaces were being um, inspected without anybody's knowledge. Right, right. There was inspections going on, and uh, the fire department and the building inspector were not notifying the owners, or in his case, were not notifying him prior to those inspections. Now, how did the fire? Oh, sorry, and that's wrong. And the, the law clearly states is you have to make every attempt to contact the owner. Because he he brought the bylaws in with him, didn't yes, he? Yes, yes, he did. He brought the state building code, he bought the uh, zoning code, and he bought and he brought in the, and actually an F eleven form as well. And it says a reasonable attempt to find the owner. Correct, correct. So in other words, you are not to enter an unoccupied building without the owner's permission. And he was right. Why does such a thing happen? It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. He, is, he was correct. I mean, we know that. Uh, and um, and he, I think he had, he, he had pointed out to another building where uh, town <laughs> officials 
and I think um, C.C. Van Dyne was discussing illegal entry onto a property without breaking an entry, but actually illegal trespassing. Mm -hmm. So it should not happen. And I think uh, Blythe Robinson, the town administrator, stated that she would um, make every attempt to make sure that this is corrected in the future. Now, why is the fire department involved? Is that is that to give it a, some le legitimacy? Or? No, the fire department, I, on certain buildings, they do have to perform, restaurants in particular, do have to perform a yearly inspection and um, to make sure for fire safety. Yeah. But, but again, same same policy goes. They don't, it isn't a surprise inspection. They have to coordinate with the owner. They check their fire extinguishers, make sure they're all up to date, make sure their fire alarms are working, make sure the emergency lights are working. So it's an important function. But Mr. Quadlieri you know. said that that he had the fire, but that these were not, I mean, these buildings didn't, didn't require didn't fire. Didn't require building, ins building inspection. They did require fire. They do get yearly fire inspection, but not building inspection. Yeah. It's the building inspection that they don't require. So by going in with the fire department, exactly. the commissioner exactly. has an entree. Yes. Very, very well put. Very well put. Do they have keys for all the buildings in town? I think the fire department has access to every building in town, either via key or via some code. But yeah, I'm pretty sure the fire department does to avoid, obviously, destroying uh, property. Now, what I found interesting was, um, oh, yes, I want to say, so, so the initiation of the inspection was through the fire department, Correct. but he went along. Correct. <laughs> so, and then I, uh, Mr. Quaglieri said that, that that one of the answers he got is no one's ever complained. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that is the most that is the most fallacious defense yeah. for a complaint. You know, I mean, it immediately puts throws it back on you to say, well, there's something wrong with you. Right. Everybody, nobody's so fussy. Blah 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 blah. Right. And and it's a uh, it it's just you know it's. It's bad, bad policy, and it, and it's and it's, it's it was it was good that he brought it up because it, it has to be corrected. Well, it's what bureaucrats it be do. I mean, yeah. I, I know when I worked for the Boston Public Schools, I mean that's what I heard all the time. Right. You know, it's and, always been that way. And, and yeah, <laughs> and and so, uh, you know, and and you know, and even, it's it's a it's like a common, it's a common ruse. Now he he was also saying that he felt there was um, some malice involved, some suspicion of malice on his part. And I mean, this is what he said. And he um, and he felt that there was a collection of information that could potentially harm people. Yeah. Well, I think when you enter someone's, there's there's this case study out there that you enter someone's building um, and something illegal might be going on and you, and you bring it out, yes, you can harm people by that. You know, maybe there's something not illegal, but something someone doesn't like. So yeah, it should not, um, it shouldn't just be a free pass. There should be. There's rules that we are supposed to follow. I know I do animal control as well as you know. And um, I cannot, I think the term is estrogen or something, I can't go in the back of someone's property uh, only just, just to go looking. Only what I can visibly see, and I think the same thing goes for policemen. Unless there's a cause to go back there, you're not supposed to go wandering around people's properties. Or the, or the, or the, the resident says, that you, could you find so-and-so? I saw this dog and yeah, he was I here, mean, but There has to be here. a reason, but you have to, it really has to be imminent danger. You can't just say, well, I, I thought I heard something or saw something. You really have to have policy. And that's in the mass know. regs. Yeah, yes. Now, he also mentioned that other people have had this experience and I felt the, that the implication was that people were afraid to say anything. Yeah, I think I think well, usually it's occurring when you're when you're starting up a business. So I think people are very mindful of that, especially in Norfolk, where they, you know, for years we always used to heard the term. It was no for Norfolk, right? So people always, you know, were very scared because opening up businesses in Norfolk was, was not an easy task. No, and um, and so huh. people were frightened over the fact that uh, if you said the wrong thing or did the wrong thing, you may not be able to open. So I, I can understand that, and I think it's still going on to some degree. But uh, again, hopefully, we will correct this. We will correct it. Not now, hopefully, we will. We will correct this. Um, I think Blight is on this. Now, what about, um, now he also mentioned, suppose the inspectors got hurt when whoever was in there got hurt. Yeah. yeah. But that would be on them. I mean, if you come in without permission, and, and also if you, I'm sorry, if you come in without, it's kind of like um, uh, uh, an unauthorized wiretap. If you go in without permission and you see something, can that be brought to court? 
or I, I, I'm, Usually, just, I'm just I think thinking without being a lawyer, probably would be thrown out. But if they got hurt, typically, I think what you'd find is they'd still be covered because um, they're covered under workers' compensation. And um, so the question would get to, I mean, they, they might be covered under one compensation, workers' compensation, but they may also be losing their job because obviously the town would still be responsible for these individuals. But the question would be is, why were you doing that? You were doing something you shouldn't have been doing. So, yes, you're covered under workers' comp if you got hurt. But by the way, you won't have a job tomorrow because you actually did something that's against policy and against the law. So it could work both ways. But there must have been a toleration for this sort of thing, or it wouldn't be happening. Yeah, I think, I think that's a nice way of putting it, a toleration. I think that's a nice way of putting it. Now, so, so you think... You think this will stop? It has to stop. And, and uh, the town administrator has vowed that she will make sure it stops. So if it doesn't, then it becomes incumbent on the Board of Selectmen to make sure it stops. But uh, I think the, uh, as, as our town administrator says, she is the day manager. And all these, indiv all these department directors report to her. So it will be her responsibility to make sure that it happens. Because he also raised the point that he felt that some applications were not treated fairly. He was referring to an F-11, which in Norfolk is a document that the building inspector uses to determine a new use of a building or a new business. And it's a form that's filled out, and then it's determined based on zoning, um, whether or not that business can go into a certain area. Well, no, but I think his point was that regardless of that, yeah. that some applications or that some people are just simply not treated fairly. Others no. go through and other people yeah. don't. Yeah, I think he's I think there's a couple of different cases out there that he was citing that there. Yeah, there seems to he be. He didn't mention anybody. Yeah, but. there seems to be some. Um, there seems to be. It, it's very subjective. And I think uh, as I brought up at the meeting is that this was supposed be? to be taken. It shouldn't be. This was supposed to be taken out of the hands of the building inspector and put into the hands of the planning board. Um, yeah, that and was we, the other thing, because you raised and, the uh, issue of planning board. Yeah, this was, this was going to be a Warren art, an article on our, uh, on our town meeting in the last fall or this spring was to pull the F-11 from the building inspector and have it oh, be done really? by the planning board, who, who, who actually approves roads and developments and new businesses in town. So we felt it was a more, I think a lot of people feel it's a more appropriate place for it. It gets but a lot more that, eyes and a lot more, and, and the zoning, the planning board, similar to the zoning board, is we have, a, we have a set of criteria. So everything can be done to the same criteria. So what happened to that? And for some reason, it did not uh, make it to fall town oh. meetings. So maybe we'll see it in the, uh, this fall town meeting. Pardon my sarcasm. Yes. Um, now, there also was mentioned, in, in connection with that F-11, what, what, now, what is the role of non-conforming use? And what, what there, is not conforming? There are obviously any property that's been in existence continuously <laughs> prior to zoning for that area is considered a non-conforming use. Um, it's, I think it's a chapter, section six, chapter 40. Because it had the never been laws. approved? It never, it was, it was like pre-existing, pre grandfather. Yes. They don't use the word grandfather anymore. So it's considered <laughs> non-conforming, <laughs> pre-existing. <laughs> yeah, we've gotten rid of grandfathering. <laughs> so those buildings, as long as they're continual use, um, if you, I think, um, I think if you recall, we had the oh, yes. Bremless, the Bremless property. The fellow cut wood. Yes. And we had came before the zoning board, and he had con showed that he, his grandfather, his father, yes. had continued to do it, and um, and it was it, again, it was a residential zone. So one would say that no, you can't cut wood and sell wood in a residential zone, but it was pre-existing, non-conforming. So the 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 idea behind F11 is that the applicant, I think, when Mr. Greg Larry was was touching on was the applicant should be the owner because he has privilege to those rights and he knows what his rights are as an owner. And a tenant could take away those rights if an owner did not know that the tenant was actually filling on F11 and actually could be violating his rights under non-conforming pre-existing uses. Now I'm thinking, I, I can't remember what it was, but I'm thinking about, oh, uh, the, the house across, <laughs> The, the house on Main Street that was an ice cream place across from our friend. And there was a house taken down that I think yeah. belonged to LaRusso. And then there was yeah. another little house. And there had been a, um, it, it was a, a real realtor estate, in there. Right, and they wanted to put an ice cream and, place in And there. one of the arguments with that was that it had been occupied as a business 
for such and such a amount of time. Right. And somebody challenged that and said, no, it has right. not been because I've been right across the street here and I've seen it. Right, right. And that's actually in court right now. It's actually still in court um, be, being fought out at this time. So, yes, exactly. Very, very similar situation. How can that be defended? I mean, I mean, isn't it, I mean, isn't it, I mean, it must be written somewhere if there's a, still a business in a certain building and they're still doing business. Well, that's the question is, are they doing business? Or is it continuous? So that's when you're looking at nonconforming, you're making sure, has the business been there and has it been continuous? So if it was a real estate office, did that remain a real estate office throughout the time from pre, prior to our bylaws, continuously till the current time? Is, Without is, any breaks greater than a 24-month period. Oh, 24 months. Oh, right, the two years. Correct. So that's that's really the that's the key factor. It's got to be continuous. Now, I wrote down, um, I heard, I believe I heard him say, Mr. Clavier, due process of non-conforming use can be violated. Oh, that's what he's talking about, right. by the, having it, the, the, the inappropriate tenant. Right. Should be done by an owner. And if the owner wants to give agency to a tenant, I'm sure he'll make, or he or she will make them aware of what his rights are. I mean, I mean, the building we're in here, uh, I think pre-existed zoning. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that go on in this building mm -hmm. that our current zoning probably wouldn't allow, mm -hmm. but because they existed prior to zoning. And so, stay there. Yeah, and they can stay here as long as they're, they're operating. Now, is that why years ago there were all these businesses that they didn't want to let into town? Was that the, was part of the excuse um, um, I remember, for example, there was a fellow that lived uh, down on, on King Philip, and he was a police officer. And one of the okay. things that he did for the Boston police was he taught martial arts. And he wanted to put a martial arts place in there, uh, the, the one that's where the cleaners is and where Scylla's was going to go in. Okay. Okay. And he got turned down, and he just got very disgusted about the whole thing. And yeah. I wonder if, I mean, but... What could be the possible reason? I mean, he, he, yeah, that I don't. I know, know. you weren't. Yeah, I was I mean, just wondering yeah. if that was it's one of the one of the it excuses. Could have been. I mean, it, the, the law is pretty clear. If it if if it's non-conforming pre-existing, it's allowed. If it's not non-conforming pre-existing, and in the B one zone, it was 1993 was when the B one zone was developed. If it's after that, yes, there are a certain set of rules that allow you to have businesses in this area, and then there's special permits that allow you to be in this area. Anything else is not allowed. So, I mean, the rules are pretty clear. They shouldn't be that difficult. But um, I think the, the issue gets to be the non-conforming pre-existing. But why should, that seems like a crazy rule for the state to have, that if, if something goes in, then from, from then forward. They are allowed to? You have to, no, that, that it changes the use. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I think it's just to make sure you don't just have all kinds of little businesses popping up everywhere. And um, you may not want that either. You may not want to just have anybody decide what they want to do in a certain area. Now, I also heard that someone say, I think Mr. Quaglia said that it's not specific, or I'm asking you, is it specific as to who fills it out on that the, form? Our, our zoning bylaws say applicant is the building owner or his agent. Oh, that's it says what it our on zoning, the form? That's, oh, no, the form says applicant. Our zoning bylaws, which is what this form is predicated you on, should say it. says the applicant is the owner or his agent, assigned agent. But when you look, when you looking at when that form. When you see form, the form, it doesn't say that. And it, these form also maybe it does, should. the form also doesn't have a spot for the building owner, which I think it should. It should actually have a six. So if, you're gonna, if your tenant's going to fill it out, the owner should be able to see what the tenant's writing. Now, who generated that form? I think it was done by the building department. <laughs> so. Sorry. Well, it's the fox is watching the hen house. Well, honestly, um, okay. Um, so, who gives the tenant the form? The, the building department. Okay. All right. Now, because I was going to ask you about it, something that's measured at the planning board, and so you sure. you answered that yep. question. Yep. Um, and another issue was raised about a um, a financial issue for the owner of the building. Was he referring to maybe a tenant wanting to leave or is it yeah, I mean, hinges on his relationship with the tenant? Yeah, I, I, his case is very specific and um, I've got to be very careful because I'm actually, I'm actually appealing a decision with regard to that building. But there was, a, um, there was a real faux pas with regard to that building and allowing a bank to move. 
and um, it shouldn't have been allowed to be. Move out? Move out, move into another space in the B1. Um, now, how does, how, can, again, can I can't elaborate about, on it. it. Oh, you can't that was, either. I okay. can't. Yeah, it was just, it was, uh, it should not have been, um, it, it shouldn't have been allowed. It, it was against the, it was against the. Now, that's the, the credit union for which yeah. they're building a building. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. But but I think it, it it could interfere with the relationship between the the owner uh, and the ab- tenant ab- because absolutely. what is going ab- on? Absolutely, absolutely. It, it could actually destroy businesses, and in um, in his case, it actually financially hurt him, which was uh, which was unfortunate, very unfortunate. Oh, so that actually did happen. Yeah, it did actually happen, and it uh, it was uh, it did financially affect him. He lost tenant. He lost his tenant. Oh, is that so? Yeah. And uh, so that cost him many thousands of dollars, which is unfortunate. Somebody actually picked up and left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my lord, that's 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 hardly what we. Uh, it's not what we're trying to do. No, and um, so if a, if a tenant's been has been asked to fill out this F eleven, which it should not have been, is there any the, the tenant still has to pay the fee? Correct. Correct. The fee is the, is obviously so that they can review it, check zoning bylaws, check the records. So it's, it's, it seems like a pretty high fee. I think it's one hundred fifty dollars. It's a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollar fee. Yeah. And then there's another one to put up a sign. Yes, I think there's a sign fee. Yeah. What's that about? Yeah. Well, if you, you, cause signs have, we have signage bylaws, which we're hopefully trying to amend. We have a very old signage bylaws in this town. I mean, Dunkin' Donuts, I think, um, just started their uh, Baskin Robbins yes. efforts up. And um, in most towns, you see these large sails now that are being that wave in the wind. Yes. Um, yeah, you know, Norfolk doesn't allow those. Well, and uh, not, not, but that, for, not that but, good looking. But for an opening, well, there's then, one down on one A. Yes, there is. Yeah, I think I don't know if it's on. It's, Norfolk at, the, it's or at the gas station. Uh, well, there you go. See, it probably shouldn't be allowed. But uh, it. Uh, but Dunk, I think Duncan Jonas was trying to find out if they could put some of those up, but it's against our bylaws. So our signage bylaws are another area that we're hopefully the planning board and the uh, town planner are working on to. But but why should there be a, a fee? A hundred or, or over to, to, to put your sign. You buy the sign yourself. Yep. You pay somebody to put it up. Why it's the review. Have, it's the review. But it's how long could it possibly coming. take? Good question. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that long. Um, because I remember too when um, over at the Rocco Plaza, was it over there? It was some place where somebody wanted to put a neon sign. Yes. And is that also banned? We don't allow neon signs in Norfolk. Um, internally, we 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 actually say no. Our bylaw says no internally lit signs, which is what a neon oh. sign is. The problem is, if you go through town, the mass lottery signs are all internally lit. Yeah. Uh, there's a number of other signs. Beer and so uh, forth. Coca Cola. Yeah. Uh, Pepsi uh, machine type signs are all internally lit. So again, it's not clear. And um, and the whole reason the neon sign was it was actually this building was when we had the uh, the food mart over here. Yeah. Had, had a neon sign which caused the fire, and that's oh. and that was the time when they removed all neon signs. And town. how long ago was that? That was what almost 15, 20 years ago. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, there was a fire right next door here. So, um, well, you know, again, I mean, yeah. it's, just it re- means- it's it's a lot of cleanup, and and that's what I think we're all trying to work towards is cleaning up some of these bylaws, cleaning up this signage bylaw. We've got to get with the twenty first century with our signage bylaw. We really do, and uh, and and promote business if we want them to stay. I mean, I think the um, I think another example is the beer. There's a beer place down in Rocco Plaza who was trying to oh yes, yeah he was trying beer, to the craft beers. right craft, he was trying to change his sign a little bit and I think he had to go in front of the planning board to do it he, and um and, it, and he was and he had spent a lot of money and effort into putting this sign up and again we want to promote that business he's obviously a local business so um it seems like we got to be really smart about you know yes we want to make sure we we we, we keep some controls on it but we're also got to become friendly to business in town because I find it ironic, again, this is me speaking, I find it ironic when that strip mall, where the cleaners is, yeah. could be lifted up and dropped in Chelsea and nobody would know the difference. It is not attractive, it's dumpy, and yet they're worried about internally lit sign. Yeah. I mean, maybe they don't have any control over the way the building looks. They can control the sign. Right, right. They can control the sign, they can't control the building because we don't own it. I mean, it just seems kind of ironic. Yeah. Um, um, okay, I'm going to say it was something else. Um, I don't know what it was now. You said something and then, um, 
Okay, so you had said that 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 uh, Blythe Robinson deals with the with the building commissioner yes. first. She is the day manager. Okay, now we're going to take we're going to take a break in this discussion, and I'm going to ask the audience if you can guess what the next topic is going to be. All right. I wanted to <laughs> we have a couple. I don't even know. <laughs> yes, you do, and so does everybody who's ever been listening to this show. Now, a um, a, view, a viewer. C.G. of Main Street writes, Okay. What, what is the formula for the price of affordable housing? What factors enter into it? And, and the last question is, what is the price in Norfolk? Well, that depends on the development, doesn't it? Correct. All right, Correct. so what is the price in Norfolk? Okay. Yeah. So what about the first two? The, <laughs> uh, th this is really an affordable housing trust question, and uh, because there is a formula that goes into what affordable units in Norfolk based on the market rate of houses go for. And uh, I think affordable units in Norfolk are somewhere around the 200, 250 range, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. I think they're around Even if the other houses in the development are, are six and up? Yeah, I think they, they, it is. It's a, it is. Developers um, have long complained that they lose money on every affordable unit. And um, so the, the prices of the affordables are, are much low, much lower. So you don't actually know what that formula I don't, is? No, I don't know the formula because they, I, think it's, it, I think it's based on each development because some developments, obviously we have 106, 108 Main Street, which the prices of those are at a higher range. Um, 25 Rockwood Road, the development that will be coming up, the prices will be a much lower market price, which means the affordables will obviously be a lower price. So I think the formula is based on every development, what the pricing is going to be within those developments. And but that's then, done by the Affordable Housing but then Trust. Do, look, do they look at, at salaries It's looked at the in, average, in sal average salaries, I think, of the Massachusetts and the average salaries of the community. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that might not really help you, the average salaries in the community. No, though, no, it actually, really Norfolk gets to be, I was, um, I was amazed to find out the... Uh, Medium income in what Norfolk. What is it? Do you is, know? Okay. I think it's I think it's just over a hundred thousand, which surprised me. For yeah. a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Now, this CG also asks if the advisory. I'm sorry, it's not fun. I don't know why I'm laughing. Is the advise that says the advisory board lost its clout? And or actually, it was why has the advisory board lost its clout? Was the actual question. And can the public interact with them? The, the advisory board is their really function is more around budget time. Uh, they're actually the ones who review all the budgets after they've been presented to the selectmen, the develop, and the directors have put them together. And uh, the advisory board is the final review before it goes to town meeting to be approved. But aren't um, there? I'm sorry. And that's and that's their role. So the advisory board hasn't lost its clout. Their job is to. To, they're really in most towns. It's called a finance committee. Oh, Norfolk. It's an advisory board, but um, it is really their job is to review. Their their real focus is during budget time in reviewing budgets, and um, that's really their their primary job. But there have been things before them that they've tabled that didn't seem the tabling didn't seem to have anything to do with money. Yeah, that's true. Streets, um, building transfers. Yeah. Um, I don't. Again, it's a. They work or directly to with do them. about maintenance of. Well, I think not maintenance. Remember, yeah, no, more, more it's, it's more on whether or not roads and sometimes uh, convert allowing buildings to change. Um, I think Camdra Chemicals. There was a uh, a couple of years ago. Camdra Chemicals was um, was looking to buy a residential property still and has actually now. Um, next to their existing building over at City Mills, and uh, the planning, the uh, advisory board tried to table it, and uh, there was actually a public revolt during town meeting, and actually it got heard and approved. So, at the, on uh, the spot. On the spot. So yeah, there is some give and take. Oh, I don't but, remember um, that. Yeah, it was a, it was probably about ten years ago, or maybe six, six, seven years ago. Well, again, I mean that that harkens back to. <clears throat> People gathering together, their for their you know supporters. That's right. And and coming in, yeah. and then go leaving out, you know, leaving leaving, you yeah. know, sat in a and good reviews and good reviews. I mean, the the advisory board is appointed by the town moderator, so Jay Talman appoints the advisory board. So uh, yeah, we just we have to, and I think he does a pretty good job of of, of manning that advisory board. I know a couple of members, Joyce Terry was very good, and uh, some others. But uh, yeah, they have a they have a very specific task, and it's an important role. In town, it really is. It should not be looked upon as a uh, 
as a as a secondary type job. They do have an important role. Yeah, I don't I don't know why. I don't know what the yeah. the origin of that uh, was. But no, but what I what I was going to say. I mean, it, it you know this this idea of bringing in the the, the troops to go in and pass something, which yeah. is with the you know what. Yeah. And then and then going out, you know, triumphant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would hope that I would have I would have liked the advisory board to have taken a closer look at that. You know what? Um, <laughs> and they didn't. They uh, they took the word of the school committee and the word of the uh, school administration. And um, as you know, that project has changed slightly. Uh, well, before since we, we started. before we go down that road, yep. have, I, if you have guessed our next topic is the roof, you were right. All right, now. Um, Aren't you lucky you have a roofer on the board of selectmen? <laughs> we would have nothing to talk about. Oh, well, well. Um, now let me go back to my thing here. <laughs> roof. All right. Where are we here? I'm sorry. Because I do this because I don't want to. Okay, it's too much at stake here to you know. Um, now, Blythe mentioned an entity for approving change orders. Now, change orders, I assume, are changes to the original project. Exactly. And. Whether use, they increase or reduce the price <clears throat> or the scope. And I believe I heard her say that um, it would be she and the superintendent Correct. if it was under 50000 Correct. Okay, because I, I didn't find it written, but I remembered hearing that, and I thought, oh. And um, so the, the, the BSR, I, I don't know what, the, it's BSRA, I think, I, school, all right. Yeah. I'm not sure what be. Yeah. Um, that if it's small, uh, you don't need the committee. So small being under fifty thousand. Yeah, a project. I think the normally the the um, they require a building committee for larger projects because this project is only three point five million. It, it doesn't require a building committee. The fire police station required a building committee because of the size of it. It was close to eight million dollars. But um, this is such a small project. Well, eight o. Eight million was the original. Eight million. Eight million. Oh. Yeah. Eight million. Um, it's, it's, but uh, so this is much less than that. So therefore, this didn't require a permanent building committee to review it. But the and, and the issue is, is that this project has to be completed, I think, by August 12th. Mm -hmm. The Board That's of right. Selectmen, I don't think, meet till after the Board of 12th. Uh, yeah, August, they meet August 13th. August 13th. So that there would have to be special Board of Selectmen meetings following open meeting law if we wanted to review change orders. So her thing was... Allow myself, the head of the school, and the facility, the maintenance director, to review these change orders and either approve them or not, so that we can keep the project moving and get it done on time, so the teachers can get back in, set up their rooms, and so forth. Now, something occurred to me. I'm just—it's it's an aside. We are—we have spent four, approximately four point two million on the safety building. More than that. Does do Rentham and Plainville pay us rent? They will pay rent. I think the rent is something like thirty-five thousand. A uh, year or something. It's not uh, much. No, it isn't. It's not a large. Uh, it's not a lot of money. And this is just for the Matacomet Regional Dispatch Center. That's the, the total rent for that. So each one, each town, Rentham, Plainville, and Franklin each pay a portion of that. But um, no, it doesn't seem like a um, a, a lucrative uh, tenancy agreement. So yeah, but that's, they do pay rent. That's only three thousand a month. Yeah, it's not a lot of money. Yeah. But I might be wrong in the figure. I don't know exactly the figure. We'll find that out for the next. Just Next saying. Time. Yes, we should know that. So you're just saying yeah. that you think it's, it's, it's not a, if I remember during the budget talks, I think Todd Lindmark had mentioned something around $36,000 for the rent. You know, so it's not a lot of money. Per town. I don't know if it's even per town. Oh, but, my uh, Lord. Yeah, it's not a lot of money. So it would take us a long time. Yes, it would. Yeah. But so how much, I'm uh, getting a little bit off the subject. So how much was the dispatch? How much is, is does anyone know how much that? Well, I, I remember the, dis, the the dispatch was paid for through the state, and we just oversaw it. We didn't. Pay oh, for really? The yeah, that was paid for through oh, a special oh, grant. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. All yeah. right. Yeah. Um, They're just yeah. renting, quote the 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 footprint from us. They paid for all the internal. So, it, regarding these change orders, um, you, I heard you say that that the board of selectmen should have the change orders in front of them. I mean, that doesn't seem we're, unreasonable. We're, we're sitting. We were sitting. Was it? Was it? Today is the eleventh, I think. So it was the ninth. Yes. This project has been going on for almost a month. So I would have thought we would have had the change orders in front of us for the if they were going to go to shingles from the copper, 
if they were going to change the soffit design. If uh, I think there was a soffit design, so there was a shingle change order. There was uh, some rot the on, the, no. on the fascia boards. Is this, um, excuse me, fascia is the same as soffit? No, the, the soffit is the underside. The yeah. fascia is the horizontal piece. Okay. But I would have thought all those change orders all should have been in front of us at that meeting. Uh, Greenwood Industries, we compete against them, so I know their I know their their ownership and I know their talents, and they're a very good commercial roofing company. And most of the co companies we work for, or municipalities, they want to know these answers right away. They don't they don't give us two three weeks to figure this out. You mentioned something about a turnaround. Yeah, the turnaround and time on these is usually very quick, because we all know. We know this business. We know what a fascia board is worth. We know what a soffit board is worth. We know what a sheet of plywood is worth. So when they're asking for our change orders, or we're asking for change orders, they expect to have them usually within 24 hours. There was some excuse hours. about the holiday. There was, I just felt that these things, I felt these change orders could have been before us that meeting and not been delayed, uh, which now they'll be approved by the town administrator, the head of the school. And the facility director, I just thought we should have seen him. I thought they, oh, was, yeah. for some reason it was being delayed slightly longer than I would have liked to have seen. I wouldn't, I will, when we get to the fire station project, if we do, um, that would be unacceptable to me. These change At least orders, there you can kind of start fresh correct. and say, look, these, this, these, we, these want this, order, we want these this, we want that. Orders, the but this one does have a tight, it's on a short fuse. It has to be done by the August 12th. Um, so I understand that. <laughs> That's, Hopefully it won't blow up, right? Yeah, that's one of the, um, an unfortunate yeah, metaphor. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but hopefully oh, this boy. will. Uh, I can understand the reason to want to do that, and, and and it's and based on what they told us, there is nothing else that should pop up. So in theory, is we should be seeing potentially almost a savings of one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars from what the taxpayers approve for this project. That much. Yeah, which would be the cont entire contingency, plus. Fifteen thousand dollars. I thought sixty five hundred was coming out of the contingency for uh, something. No, there that was a list of things. They actually, it was. It's really the savings in the soffit design and the savings in going from copper to shingles, yeah. which is actually paying for the design on the front of yeah. the roof, paying for the soffit, the facial repair. So it's really it's really going to the shingles from copper, which is actually paying for all the other change orders, which will be great. Hmm. Because all right, because I know there was a list. I, I didn't. I yeah. didn't. Uh, no, that's. But there was a list it. of this yeah, one, that one, that one. It was fascia board, fascia board repair. The, uh, ply, plywood was included. The, yeah, a little bit of extra for the janitors. A little bit of extra for the OPM to be there on Saturdays. So it's uh, one hundred and sixty-five thousand is being saved. Could be. Could if be. We don't use a contingency, which is beyond the contingency of one hundred and fifty thousand. No, that's that. That is the contingency. There's a contingency built into the price of this contract of one hundred fifty thousand. Okay. So we're hopefully to save all that uh -huh. plus another fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, really? Yeah. So that would be great. I hope so. Now is this now the school committee is running this project? Uh, my and again, my understanding is the school committee has to approve it. Uh, the expenditure, so the school committee is actually overseeing it. I think um, Medora Champagne was there the other night and did yes. a good job of presenting where they are, what she saw. Because she had the pit. Oh, and that goes back to the rot in the soffits. Fascia. In the fascia. Yeah. yeah. And you had you had said something about the that there was no unit price on the fascia board, which you thought was not good, and you asked, Correct. and I'm wondering why. Yeah, it it, and, it should have been included. It um, shame on, I'll say shame on Gale Associates. Say shame are on us. Are they the architects? Yeah, the, the architects. This is a uh, this is common practice in building construction and repairs. Uh, we typically we bid repair we bid plywood replacement, and we bid usually if there's a fascia or a soffit, we bid that as part of the contract to make sure oh, okay. that contractors are consistent oh, right. in their bidding. And to make sure that no contractor can take advantage of a municipality, because in this case, um, Greenwood, which I don't think they would, but Greenwood could tell us any price they wanted to tell us for this fascia board. If we don't approve it, what are we going to do? All work ceases until they rectify it. I didn't follow you. If Green, if Green, if Greenwood, and, and I'm not saying they would do this, but Greenwood could tell us that the fascia board replacement is worth a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. What's the town's recourse? We have nobody else to well, go do it. Would they be their recourse anyway? 
the recourse would well, be is if there's a unit they price, could, they would say, no, in oh, your contract. Oh, we have so-and-so and so-and-so, and so we got these yeah, bids this is, for this, this price is, of the wood. This is what it is. You, oh. you already included in your bid that it's $2 a linear foot, so therefore, if there's 300 linear feet to do, well, then we know it's $600. So there's a, And that's why you put it in there, to make sure that the contractors are held to some standard, and it helps in bidding. And, and we were all very, in, in bidding, we're very cognizant of that on, on municipal projects, is you very carefully, because that can make or break a contract for you. And whether you get it or not is how much you bid on those extras, being plywood replacement, fascia board replacement, steel replacement, anything like that. Because I, I It's just good common building practice uh, when you're bidding these jobs out. Because I can't find it here in the notes, but I remember that you said, um, why wasn't this in the in the contract? Yeah, and, and Blythe didn't have the answer, but they did say that the plywood replacement, they did, there was a unit well, that's price. That's the cheapest. Yeah, there was a unit price for plywood that's replacement. The cheapest. So they did do that. So they got half of it right, in my opinion. Oh, here it is. Yeah, what you yeah. should be. No, they got half of it right. Now, um, on those decorative shingles, yes. were you surprised that they're being warranted? No, I, no, because no? as I no, because as I've stated all along, is the warranties for shingle roofs is is not very good. It's a very to me, it's a it's a it's a misnomer because a shingle manufacturer has real specifics to their warranties. They have to be put on this way. The nailing mm -hmm. has to be done exactly this way. And so, if someone places a claim for a shingle, the manufacturer is going to check everything done with those shingles. And in this day and age, as years ago, we used to hand nail. So every nail laid flat. In this day and age, we use guns. So the nails, a lot of times, if they're not set properly, they lift, they're slightly elevated or lifted. This would be, in the manufacturer's eyes, a reason to void the warranty or to not give credit. But didn't, so, you, didn't you say at the last show that when you start cutting these these when you things, start cutting them you, you, create, you create a lot more channels so but again as I've said the manufacturer is not worried about these shingles because as far as he's concerned this is not going to ever be an issue for him these shingles ever be, ever blowing off the roof so the warranty like I said the warranty is worth what the paper is on in my opinion oh dear God yeah it's it's and again <laughs> it's really you want you want a gold seal warranty which this project does not have and so uh that's that's probably the biggest problem that I, I saw with that. It should have had a gold seal warranty. Now you said something about optics with the roof, and I didn't know what you were referring to. I guess, I guess uh, it's something looked didn't look good. Didn't I mean not not aesthetically, but not yeah. I think the fact that these things weren't included, I think it just doesn't. Okay. It doesn't say a lot about the way we put this together. Okay. It should have been a little thought thought out, thought out a little better. Thought now, out. the street names. Yes. You know, honest to God, I because I, I I was ranting about it last time. You were because you, you were heard because well, I I don't know if she watched us or she watched the sh the show, but I don't understand. You know, I think some people are raised, and I think I think women are raised to if somebody gives them tells them to do, not to question it, and I would have thought they would have said, "Are you sure there's no?" Dead veterans' names. Well, what happened? What happened here was the planning department did not speak to the right people. They had a list of names. It just it was just there was a little confusion as to. It's funny. It's it's not it's not an excuse, but I guess we have a lot of we have a lot of Betsy's um, who are on the historical commission and are in town government. So the wrong Betsy's were talked to. Literally the wrong the Bet wrong Betsy, and therefore the town planner said, well. There are no names, but the well, historical then wouldn't commission. Wouldn't that wrong Betsy have said that's not? I don't know well, what you're talking about. It's, it's just it was just one of those things that thank goodness it got caught <sighs> because it would us. have been it would have been it would have been terrible if we hadn't. But the historical commission has done a good job, and I know at every meeting they really look at things like this as to who's available, what who they should be recognizing. So um, it was good that it got caught. But somebody told me, and I think a different person told you that there's a list somewhere. The, the historical that, commission has a list, yes. That should be gone, and so it should be used. It should become, and it should and be. It, and and uh, my m m another mutual friend of ours said, you know, they're supposed to go from the top of the list down. I th well, I think maybe for veterans, but I think you got to depending on the area of town too. I mean, um, you'd we, we, you'd want to use. You you wouldn't want to. I mean, you've got a 
I forget the fellow. There's a little plaque over by your street, right by your house, actually. I can't think of the fellow's name. I love him. Um, oh, on the corner yes. there at the train. That was yes. my property, and they use it for yeah. Uh, Alan. Yeah, and what was Mr. Alan's Alan. last name? Alan was his last name. Was Alan's last yeah. name? Yeah. And he was well known in that area. Yes. So if we were going to put a street in over there, yeah. you wouldn't want to call it, you know, Weeder Way. You'd want to use his name. Right. He was a veteran as well. Right. So I think sometimes you want to try to associate it to the area. Um, in town. And similar to this area over here, uh, the, the names they actually did pick were two people who actually had little luncheonettes and restaurants in this area. Really? Yeah, right around here. Dupee so that was nice. Yeah. And Sumner. Yeah. And so one of them, I think, had a luncheonette right right around the corner here where Frank Gross's office was. So that's oh good. Oh, my. So it is in the area. That was so a long I, so time I think ago. you want to you wanna try to balance it to the, the area of town. I mean, obviously, City Mills, there's some, we have some historical. Uh, names for City Mills area, um, Abbeville, if that gets approved, we'll have some some folks up there. I think they want to save a couple of names for people who are very specific to that area. But did you all know that that the ninth sitting up there, did you know that list existed? Had anybody well, told I you? Well, I was, and I think we, you and I talked about it. I had gone, I had sat in on the historical commission meeting um, prior to the dedication of the Rose Garden. And they were talking about the um, street names and People, the Rose Garden by the library. Yes. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. they were they actually met in the house, the little house there. Well, and, they did. Uh, yeah. Ah. And they were talking about it, and um, and so I I'm I'm listening to them, and they're talking about this list, and they were all very clear about it. So when we got the when we, the selectmen received that, there is no names. It was this doesn't make any sense. But you but at the last at the previous meeting it. It would have gotten approved. Would have gotten approved because they. It was. So, I, I was very surprised because I said, "Well, maybe there's nobody in this area." But uh, so, how was it staved off? It was. Uh, Betsy Pine got in touch with me, and told me that uh, you know there was obviously a mistake. So, so what? What were were those were those street names approved and then rescinded? Exactly. Oh, all Pilgrim. Right. I think it's uh, Patriot Way, and I forget the other one, but. Uh, I'm happy they were and both Pilgrim rescinded. Way. Pilgrim Way and Patriot Way have been rescinded, will not be used in this development, and hopefully we'll, uh, we won't need them for many years to come. And we just have a, a few minutes left. Now, the, 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 you had to go into executive session because of a litigation. Was, was that with run and gun? Yes, it was. I think uh, that was announced. And you yes. can't say what the substance of that is? Yeah, no. no. Will we ever know? Yes, those executive session minutes, me, meeting minutes will um, someday be released. When once the, that, when once the that issue suit is, over, is, yeah. is settled. Once that issue is over. Because, you know, I was just thinking, I was talking to somebody today about that had, that had attended uh, a meeting with the, um, <clears throat> with the, um, the I, see, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I was going to say the Seacock 7, but, but, I mean, those people really have had a hard time. And then with the 144 on top of yeah. it, I mean, they must be. But, but this person had sat in with them and... Um, the attorney had said, had not said, excuse me, that he was there to protect the town in the sense of the administration. Not, the, I mean, it shouldn't be, I mean, he's not supposed to be there to protect the Board of Selectmen. No, the, the town council is the, there to protect the interests of the town, plain and simple, the interests of the town. Whether it be its zoning laws, its general bylaws, that's their responsibility. Hmm. Now, I wanted to ask you: <clears throat> Is it is being a um, is being a selectman? <laughs> is it everything you thought it would be? Yeah, I, I, it's, <laughs> uh, yes, it is. I think it's. Um, I I enjoy it. It's uh, some things come very easy, and maybe because I've been in town for a long time, and so a lot well, of the these, zoning board of appeals being is on certainly the zoning board, A lot of these things, the issues. But no, I think it's. Um, you know, I think it's great. I think it's uh, it's very interesting. Uh, you, I think the frustration is you want to th see things move faster. You want to see with a new town administrator, with a new board of selectmen, uh, I'd like to see change a little faster. And um, the wheels of municipal government are a little bit slower than they are in private industry. So you've got to sort of take a step back and allow the processes to take place. But um, I think that's the hardest part is I would, uh, in, coming from a corporate world, we uh, you make decisions and you, and you implement them right away. Uh, similar to the similar to the uh, the illegal entry in in corporate in the corporate world this would be this would be handled that day immediate oh yeah. yeah oh yes yeah and so it's it's a little bit harder sometimes to deal with the but the people are great um, 
you get, you get, I've had a lot of people call me, want to talk to me about issues they have, which is great. Oh, you have? Yep. And, uh, and that's nice. And if you can help people, similar to Betsy Pine reaching out on the names and some other people reaching out on issues. Well, thank goodness. That's, that's really what you're there for. And as long as they're willing to come out and get in contact with you, it's great. So, now, yes, I'm enjoying it. Now, you made me think of something else. Mr. Quadlieri has some kind of a zoning complaint against him, doesn't he? He just read zoning. Um, there's a zoning enforcement right now against him, and it's going to be heard later this month. Very well, next week, right? At the it's ZBA. actually not against him. It's actually against the uh, the chairman of the zoning board. Oh, which is me. Oh, all right. Oh, you. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll be heard this Wednesday. There's no, no, a, no. Uh, I th what I no. Heard he doesn't have a, a zoning complaint against him. No. No, so actually, why did your situation? It's actually an appeal. It's actually an appeal of the zoning. And the, well, why was yours mentioned? Uh, he meeting? might have mentioned it that it would be coming up this week. That there's actually I'm appealing the building. Your situation. Yeah, I'm appealing well, the I building commissioner's decision with regard to 194. So, okay. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah. Okay. He will probably be attending as the owner of that building. Uh, Mr. Quagliari will right. probably be attending that hearing. Well, all right. Okay. Yeah, should be interesting. Well, is the ZBA more complicated than the than the Board of Selectmen? I think the ZBA you rely a lot more on technical information and law. Um, but Board of Selectmen, a lot of it is, I think, a little more subjective and really making sure we're 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 going on a path. You know, I think that's a lot different. I think um, I think I find ZBA a little harder. Um, it requires a little more time. Hmm. Um, Board of Selectmen, a lot of it seems to come very easy, hmm. um, whether it be me or just, you know, it's enjoyable. But um, yeah, I think the ZBA is a little harder because you're really trying to technically look at things a little bit differently. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So. All righty. Well, listen, we, thank you for wa watching Just Saying. My co-host, the important one, is Chris Weeder, Selectman. I'm Anne-Marie Battistone. I just ask the questions and make remarks. And thank you. Thank you. Well, it's true. And thank you so much for watching. And uh, we won't see you again until uh, the middle of August because the next Selectman's meeting is not until the 13th. That's right. We'll only have to talk about the roofs one more time. Oh, so you say. So I say. <laughs> I don't believe it. So thanks very much for watching. I'm Anne-Marie Battistone with Christopher Weeder, and you're watching Norfolk Community TV. Thank you.